will do things, say things, operate and act according to their best guess of what they think they should do, of how they think they should be, and what they think they should act or react to. Because people think that they should do something doesn't necessarily mean that that alone makes it God's will. Just because someone reads a Bible and understands the theology of it and operates according to certain God-given principles in the Word of God, does that make a person doing God's will? Whenever we look at our lives, we examine them according to scriptures in order to see what contradicts the scripture and we are able to produce a certain type of religious expression with which we can examine whether our deeds be good or whether they be bad. Whether they operate according to the principles or the understanding of Christianity as it's personified in the Bible. And we can draw a lot of conclusions from that. We can sit down and study and make ourselves wise according to the wisdom that's contained inside of the Bible. And we can become biblical scholars in a way that would produce in our lives a certain actions and reactions that would be very positive and very religious in their way of personifying the best intentions of what the scriptures were meant to be. But in all of these things, unfortunately, we fail miserably unless it be the Spirit of God that directs a man's life. If it isn't the Spirit of God who is telling a person what to do, where to go, and what to say, then that person isn't being led by the Spirit, isn't being filled by the Spirit, and it isn't being walking in the Spirit. There is a reason why Jesus said to wait and to tarry ye in Jerusalem for the promise that God had given them. There was a manifestation that God still had for the entire world to see of what would happen with God alive inside of a human being. There would still be that possessiveness of the reality of the jealousy of God to such a degree that he would not leave us homeless or alone in this world to be his witnesses without there being a portion or a measure of himself inside of us. And the way that he demonstrated that to us was through the life of Jesus Christ. For at the time that Jesus came to John the Baptist, Jesus did not have the Holy Spirit without measure. Jesus had the Spirit of God working in him. One of the things that was true about the prophecies was that from the moment that John baptized Jesus, the Spirit of God filled him without measure. He overflowed with the presence of God himself being in his life. And from that moment on, there was no doubt as to God in us, God with us, Emmanuel. For such had become the God manifested in the flesh who was flesh itself of God created in our image that he would be just like us, a human being, but that there would be something different because he would be totally dependent upon his Father in heaven. And to manifest that dependency and that truth, then Jesus had to become the Son of Man and be only human being, even though he was God in the flesh. When he did that, he became as dependent upon as we are today the same type of creative being that God wants every single human being to be, which is likened unto his Son, very much likened unto Jesus himself, that we would be so Christ-likeness, that we would be called Christian, that we would be Christ-like, that we would move and be and have our being in Jesus himself, that alone we would be nothing but with God we would be everything that all things would be possible through us because in us would dwell the presence of God bodily and the way that he would do that would be manifested in the presence and the person and the manifestation of God himself in the spirit of God 
Now we've already studied this Spirit of God. to such a degree that we realize, wow, we know little, if out nothing, about really who the Spirit of God is. We know that God the Spirit, or the Spirit of God, is the third part of the Trinity of God, the Godhead Himself, the Father, Son, and the Spirit, for the three bear witness of one. But do we really know who or what the Spirit is? We know that He's a person, and we've been reading and studying according to the book that we've been using, The Purpose of the Holy Spirit in Your Life, or The Power of the Holy Spirit in Your Life in Living Water by Chuck Smith. And we've been reading and going off with what the Spirit of God has been telling us and revealing to us something that we never expected when we started this study. And that was the knowledge of the Spirit of God as He became real in this study and became alive unto us that He even stopped the study at times because we weren't operating according to His Spirit because we were anxious or we were in sin or we weren't moving and having our being in Him. And so, knowing and growing and learning and developing in this study with Chuck Smith's book as well as the Word of God, being led by the Spirit of God, hearing the Spirit of God, knowing that the Spirit of God was opening up truths to us, we were surprised to find that the Spirit of God, there's more we don't know than what we do know. And that no one can come up to you and say to you, I am the Spirit of God. Because we don't see that in heaven. As a matter of fact, we don't really understand much of what we say we believe in when it comes to the Spirit of God. So we study this in a long, life-giving, life-fulfilling ministry that's going to never end as far as this study of the Spirit of God is concerned because there is not a black and white definition of the Spirit of God. If anyone tells you that, they're lying. And the Spirit is not in them. For every scripture that you see that manifests itself as though there were some type of person of the Holy Spirit, you see also the question of, but what about? And you ask yourself certain things that only the Spirit of God could lead you to understand them. It has come to my conclusion that the Spirit of God manifests himself as he chooses any way he chooses, whenever he chooses, the way he wants to manifest himself to a person. Even as the great I Am statement that we know that God, the yud Hey vav Hey in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament, when God spoke unto Moses and said, whose name shall I tell them that I'm being sent by? And he said, tell them I am sent you. Can be translated, I am that I am, or I will be what I will be. And we've discovered that the Holy Spirit does that in a person's life. The Holy Spirit is that person of the Trinity that actually makes and causes the Word of God to be alive and quickened unto us. Quickened in the sense of all of a sudden it fits. There's something about it that in my present circumstances, though it's not circumstantial evidentiary, only manifested to individuals and not corporeal approval of the entire body of Christ as we see that theology wants to make it into only one definition for the one scripture that's written there because that's what theology tries to do. It tells you that man, as he defines it, is only related to man in one way that the scripture can be ever manifested to you and told. But we find that theology fails because it says the Spirit makes application as he chooses, giving to every man severally as he decides when it comes to the gifts. How can the Word of God be applicable to the individual unless it be spiritually understood? Unless it be manifested to the individual by the one God, to the one man, so that there would be fellowship between them? You see, theology wants to make you think that there's only one way to look at Scripture. And it's true, there is. Only one way. In God. For God Himself speaks through the Scripture. And that's what the scripture is. It is the word of God made live unto you by the spirit of God with which he can make you hear his voice and make you understand his will and to have his heart and to have the living God inside you. His spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are one with him. How so can that be when we are a sinful temple that we are? Because it's his spirit inside us, not our own, that bears witness with his spirit that we are in the truth. And the truth is light. And that's why the Word of God is so 
mandating that we must be born again and walk in the Spirit. That we must ask the Spirit to teach us, to guide us, to lead us, to inspire us, to give us ears to hear, to open our eyes that we might see, to make it known to us the things that the Spirit says. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God may say. For such as it is that the Spirit of God hovered over the waters in the beginning of creation. And yet we say, who is the Spirit of God? Who is this God's Spirit that we look at? And many, ignorantly or chosenly, prefer not to deal with the Holy Spirit because we know that the one sin that shall not be forgiven now would be blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And we talked how that was to the rejection of what the Holy Spirit had done in the life of a man, which is to give salvation to the Son of Jesus, the Son of God through Jesus Christ Himself. That the rejection of Jesus Himself would be the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had raised Him from the dead and it was to blasphemy the work of God made manifest by the Spirit of God in the world and in all of creation to the universe to the condemnation of those that have rebelled against God, but to the confirmation of those who have chosen to follow God. And so, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, we know that terrifies people because that's the only sin they would not be forgiven in heaven and on earth. So people have misunderstood and misappropriated that and misled people by that. But the Spirit of God was not harsh. For the Spirit of God will not always strive with man, but the Spirit of God strives with our understanding and the Spirit of God changes us, rearranges our lives, causes us to understand the Word whatsoever. The Holy Spirit teaches us. We are told that He is the Comforter, that He would give us gifts of the Spirit, that He would operate according to His own will, that He would do things that make it apparently aware that the Spirit of God is a person, though we know not how, and we don't fully understand who. So as we were studying that in the book that we've been reading in Living Water, we looked at the characteristics of what a person would do, and then we said, that's the Holy Spirit. And that's what a lot of times you have to be careful that people will do, as we found out. They will attach to the Holy Spirit characteristics and then say, well, he's a person. Well, he's not a thing. He's not like the thing of the God, or a God thing, or a part of God. He is God alone. He is the tripartite, the third part of the aspect of the Godhead. That God said, even in creation we could see it. I defy you to tell me, what is that? Is it the stem, the root, and the flowering of a plant? Tell me in all of creation how you really understand, looking at creation, the Godhead. You don't. But there is something there to be seen of the Godhead. And so we have said, we are not as wise as we think we are. But we need to give opportunity for the Spirit of God to teach us as we need to be led by Him so that we would understand more of who this person that we think we know but people have gone so off track and abstract with at times by using gifts of the Spirit, abusing gifts of the Spirit, confusing gifts of the Spirit, that they've done more about the Spirit that they feel as opposed to what the Spirit of God says about Himself or as He teaches and leads us and guides us in the primary purpose with which God sent Him to us with which God will remove Him from the world soon. So in studying that we realize that this can't be a short-term subject. It can't be just one day we're going to wake up and understand, oh, I'm spiritually baptized. I've been baptized in the Spirit of God. First I was baptized in blood and fire and the Word. You know, I've been baptized into the world. I've been baptized into life itself. You know, I've received the baptism unto salvation. Oh, now I'm being baptized into the Spirit. So, in a sense, if you could receive this, there are three ages of man. Really, there's a physical part, a soulful part, and a spiritual part. In each age, our maturation comes to a point where we are moving on. There may be even more to the Spirit of God than we realize when it says that there's seven spirits before the throne. But those seven spirits are the seven spirits. It doesn't say they're the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say they're the Spirit of God. It says there are seven spirits. What's that mean?
It means what it says and says what it means. We talked about how we need to really be mindful of all that the Spirit wants to reveal to us in this study. Because when we took the time to do in each video what the Spirit told us to, He came. He spoke. And He visited with us. And we were changed. We were brought to a realization of stillness. A complete or completed understanding of calmness. Of peace. We began to realize that it wasn't about being in a hurry, but rather being still and knowing God. And as we did that, each time, God came and visited with us. Father, without you, God, we can't begin to breathe or move or have our being of our physical body, much less of our soul and our spirit. There is nothing we can do without you. There is no way we can understand without hearing you. There is less of us that has any understanding at all, except that we trust in you with all our heart. We choose to not lean on our own understanding. We acknowledge you in this study that you are our teacher, that you are our guide. Help us, O oh God, as being the Spirit of God, to give us ears to hear what you might say to us as we learn of you, as we walk with you, and as we talk with you this day and every day, that we would be led by you, Spirit of God. Come, fill us again with your understanding. Fill us with the presence of God that we might know you. Amen. And so, in reading, in comprehension, in having a foundation, I would recommend reading Chuck Smith's book, The Living Water. But as we did, we have come to the place where it says, Where is he leading you? And that's what it will always boil down to. You see, the Spirit of God is at work in you, both to do and to will of His good pleasure. The Spirit of God is conforming you into His image. The Spirit of God is speaking to you with the voice of God. The Spirit of God is causing you to understand with the hearing of God. The Spirit of God is giving you faith and He's giving you a measure of faith with whereby you could grow and develop that faith into something more than what the measure of salvation that was given to you could accomplish. He has much to give. He only asks that we do as He chooses to lead us and to cause us to remember the Son. For even as we pointed out from the very beginning, Jesus pointed to His Father and said, Not my will, but Thy will be done. And the Spirit of God, we're told, would point to the Son and would reveal the words that Jesus said because Jesus is the manifestation of the Word of God. And so we would know Jesus by hearing the Spirit of God speak to us because he would give us the ability to comprehend even as the Word of God by itself alone can never be a theological presentation by men standing alone and saying this is what God says period no other understanding can ever be a part of the scripture but the Spirit of God gives us understanding as He chooses and severally as He wills the gifts of the Spirit, whether it be wisdom or understanding or comprehension, whether it be things that aren't listed as gifts of the Spirit that are operating by the Spirit of God to make us known that we would understand even as John, when he was in heaven, said, Oh, I'm a man of unclean lips. He needed to be cleansed. And so the angel, the messenger of the Lord, took from the altar and cleansed John that he might understand and be made aware that in his sinful flesh he could not stand in the presence of God. But now, because of what had been done, he could. And so, the Spirit of God brings to us wisdom beyond our years, knowledge beyond our understanding, comprehension in a way we never would have dreamed of. We must yield our lives to the Spirit of God. Seek now, really, to hear what he would say. Listen carefully to his own words. 
as he wants to speak to you as he would choose to cause me to hear what he would say when we're led by the spirit of God God takes us any place he chooses any way he uses see God chooses and he uses whom he wills and he makes that determination and that designation by his spirit his spirit is that oil that was anointed in the Old Testament whenever you saw the anointing come upon a person that was the spirit of God on the outward manifestation of a person from the inward outward you would have known that it would have been the oil of the Holy Spirit the oil of the lamp that burned brightly that shines in the darkness it is the oil that makes that lamp lit for it is the light of God that the Holy Spirit is it is the oil of God it is the manifestation of light come into the world even if Jesus said I am the light Jesus without measure had the Holy Spirit in him his cup overflowed with that with which the Holy Spirit was is and always shall be and so in that oil of anointing that was used in the Old Testament to anoint kings to anoint buildings to cause things to be holy unto the Lord we find that the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God is what made things kadosh 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 holy 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 that's what God the Spirit does he makes things holy for the presence of God and so we need to be made holy or complete we need to be made set apart and sanctified by the Spirit of God and that's where God leads us God is always leading us to the place of sanctification and being set apart for his designation of being chosen by him to be used by him to be led by him where is he leading you when you walk with the Spirit develop in your relationship with him and respond to his work in you it is very likely that you will begin to have all kinds of glorious supernatural experiences sometimes there will be no response more appropriate than weeping at other times there will be tremendous joy or overwhelming love many kinds of responses are responsible as we walk in the spirit and allow ourselves to be led by him it's interesting the first part said is being led by the Spirit of God there would be supernatural experiences there would be things that were over and above nature that's what supernatural means it means greater than the natural aspect of what you can see even as you look at creation today do you realize that creation is under a curse so everything in the universe that you look at today is only one part of what the actual creation really was and is you see all of creation groans in travail waiting anticipating looking forward to that moment when the sons of God are revealed by the Holy Spirit when they are unveiled and fully open and made alive unto their inheritance which shall cast forth as light and drive out the darkness that's still in creation even now in this world we live in this world we live in is under a curse still to this day until the day that Jesus redeems it unto himself for he has purchased the title deed of this world by his blood but he hasn't redeemed it unto himself by his choice to prove that God is love and demonstrate it to the universe by taking back and setting forth the kingdom as he shall for a thousand years and then at the end thereof banishing forever all the corruption that's in the universe but until that day that he decides to remove the curse then at this time we only see creation as a part of nature as a natural aspect that's under a spell as it were that's under a corruption that isn't growing the way it was meant to be whenever you see a thorn on a rose bush that's a corruption of the bloom that the bush should be whenever you see an animal that's tearing at flesh and eating it for its sustenance that's a corruption of the animal's instinct of what it should be whenever you see yourself desirous of meat and blood and slobbering that's a corruption of what God intended man to be we were created for a greater purpose and design than to abuse and 
confuse the creation we see around us, even as it too likewise operates under a curse, striving and struggling to lift itself out of the roots and the dirt to offer up meager blooms and blossoms of what the rose bush today we look at and say, oh, how beautiful. God looks at it and says, oh, how cursed for what it should be would be greater than a tree in stature, would be magnificent bush in its fullness, and that the volume of its blossoms would just fill the entire area with an aroma of God offering its sweet smelling savor as a sacrifice unto God for creation that it is and so every thorn would be a bloom and you would see nothing but blossom of a giant ball spherical of what God intended the rose to be and that's what it is when it comes to you and I for we have not fulfilled our destiny as part of that creation. We are not supernatural yet. We are natural. And we operate in the nature part of the natural instincts with which we have. But we can move into the supernatural where we have this unbelievable experience of the consequences of being in the presence and the knowledge of the Spirit of God. When we feel the Spirit of God in us, when we are baptized by the Spirit of God to us. When we are filled to overflowing of the Spirit of God in us. For God will make manifest supernatural feelings as well as supernatural events. If we but ask to receive. If we but seek to find if we but be still and know he's gone. In the supernatural, we step out of this dimension of the natural and we see with eyes that can only come from the Spirit of God how the dimensions of God, the reality of all of creation, suddenly fills the full spectrum of our visibility we are able to understand things we never would have before. We are able to see things in the scripture we never would have learned on our own. We are able to hear things and to know things from other people that we never should or could have known except that the Spirit of God told us. In my life, I have experienced whew, the miraculous. I have, when I got saved, felt the miraculous in ways that most Christians were wanting to have that experience of joy unspeakable and peace unbelievable and love inconceivable. And yet even 40 days later when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, I was floored and fell on the floor. I didn't fall, but I slipped onto the floor. For I was sitting on the floor when we studied it. The Spirit of God came upon me and I spoke in tongues and I was just babbling in a language I didn't know. And there was no one around for me to have learned it from. No one told me what it was that I had and I didn't even know or conceive of what it was that I was doing. I learned the hard way. I learned from the Spirit of God Himself. And He did as He chose to do to me what He would. So later in life I would learn to apply the Word of God as I understood God teaching me based upon my experiences first sometimes and my wisdom later that my eyes would be open from the moment I was saved my eyes were open and it was unbelievable the things that I could see in the greater comprehension and appreciation of the minutiae of the details of that with which creation is and I was so able to see everything with a new light the light of God had come into me and I was amazed because I had been so shallow it was as though I were dying and many people who have approached death have talked about how their sensory perceptions are in heightened that they could see things they never saw, hear things they never heard, smell things they never smelled, taste things they never tasted before. And it was to a greater degree that the mind and the body and the physiology of the brain cells themselves had become more alivened or quickened unto life itself. And that's what the Spirit of God does for the human being as you become supernatural beyond the natural aspects of just 
looking but not seeing of listening hearing but not listening God's Spirit does that for us for He is the comfort He is tender beyond measure and powerful beyond creation God's Spirit moves in you you may not recognize the gentleness of His Spirit the tenderness of how He does what He does you may not hear how He is talking or speaking at times but if you are led by the Spirit of God you are going to experience supernatural things and I have from the moment I was saved I have experienced nothing but supernatural things and for me it was like I expected everyone else to have that same experience and yet even in this study now as I talk about the Spirit of God and as I walk in the memories of the Spirit as He's moved throughout my life in my failures and in my successes in my sins and in my forgiveness and mercy in His loving kindness and His grace I am restored to the man God wants me to be as I consider what a natural man does and a supernatural man does I know that the Spirit of God inside a person when Jesus is alive and well and living in me and the Spirit of God has been made manifest that He is fullness of His presence in me then I know that I will see know and understand and comprehend and do things that no natural man can do for even this study is all from the Spirit of God even talking about Him is from the Spirit of God every breath and every worship aspect when people feel that uh, that they feel at times that they can't put a finger on they can't comprehend is from the Spirit of God there's more you see as many as are led by the Spirit God leads them to the place of being filled by His Spirit and as many as are filled by the Spirit God wants to call them sons and daughters of God the Spirit of God is to present you faultless before the Father with exceeding joy He is constrained by your lack of participation in the work that He wants to do in you would you resist the promptings of the Holy Spirit would you resist to learn to hear his voice would you stop the work of God in your life as he chooses to move in you to do his will and not your own would you hold back from God your life when the Spirit of God says I will raise you from the dead as I did Jesus if you are led by the Spirit of God you have a supernatural life if you are led by the Spirit of God you have eternal life if you are led by the Spirit of God you have the Son and you have life God thank you Father, thank you. Jesus, Jesus, thank you. Holy Spirit, I pray and ask. Spirit of God, I intercede on behalf of those that have watched and learned and read and study according to your will that you have taught them in this video spirit to walk not according to their flesh but they have denied themselves to walk after your spirit spirit meet them 
make them supernatural. Cause them to come to the fullness of who you want them to be. Spirit, help us to be still and slow down. To be still and wait. To be still and not be a hasty people. But to find you in the midst of our waiting on you. Spirit of God, lead us and recreate in us the righteousness of God that's been given to us. That we would be holy unto you. Holy unto God. Holy unto our Father in heaven. Amen. God bless you. If I were you, and I'm not, but if I were being led by the Spirit of God, and I am, I would take a moment alone, without technology, a moment to be somewhere with creation, such as it is, under a curse. But I would take a moment to give thanks for what we do have in creation, that is still watching you and waiting for you to get your act together so that it could be fully what God intended it to be. And then we could see in creation the Godhead and be amazed at what God has done in creation as he gave it to us to enjoy of who he is, Father, Son, and Spirit.